Lordship hailed a passing youth. I say, you, fading youth, sure on the Gora, who would you be after knowing where we are? The Silent Valley. Sure, all the valleys are silent here, especially when we've got the sheep up on the mountain. No, you carry straight along this road. You see over there where the sun's picking out the sheep among the blue of the heather? Well, you bear left there. Aye, left. You come straight down to it. That's how we arrived at the beach. There are so many facets, my lord, of the Ulster magic. Here on the holiday beach, enchanting enough in itself as a summer playground, there's the added fascination of a wishing arch. Look at that, my lord. You put your hand on the rock, my lord, and wish for the most wonderful thing in the world, that this holiday could go on forever. A string of resorts give gay punctuation to 300 miles of coast where land and sea play hide and seek with one another. Donegal Dee, and all you need is a dinghy, my lord, a gentle breeze and the deep blue sea. The whole coast has been carved out into perfect bays and harbours for people who love nothing better than the creak of a rope and a wind singing in the sail. Then came what the French would call a faux pas. All right, Cavendish, I'll ask this traffic warden chappy. Here you are, traffic warden. Is it first right for England? This is the Roaring Meg, and from these walls helped in the defence of Londonderry during the famous siege of 1688-1689. I'll make a note of that. Passing Sergeant at Mace thought Rory Meg was his wife, damn it. Dawn. Back in England, Wordsworth country. Ah, they knew I was coming. A hero's welcome. Damn it, they're at it again. We'd better run for it. But where to? What about here, my lord? Tucked away in the top left-hand corner of England, in an area some 30 miles square, a land of rocks and mountains, but mountains which are scarcely more than toys, while the lakes themselves could be swallowed without trace in the great lakes of the geography books. And yet they've been enthralling people for centuries.
that night. The end of the day brings most people home, even if it is a little home you have set up for yourself from which you can watch the moonlight on the water. Or on a summer night, you may be luckier and drift on the water itself, letting it work its ancient spell. Little seems altered since the night of June the 8th, 1802, when Wordsworth tells us he wrote those lines. I've heard about shipboard romances. Really? Then this won't come as a shock to you. In the kindly dark, imagination can people the lake shore with the gentle spirits who have been drawn here over the centuries. I spent more than four years in the rent, you know. I do, and I'll bet you've shivered off your timbers too all joined together by the magic of water, rocks and windy sky, which make up the English lakes. Admiral, are you sure we should be in this lifeboat? Oh, you can't be too careful, my dear. That night, his lordship almost went adrift. Another romance cupboard, and all your fault, Cavendish. I, I had no inkling of your past association with the senior service, my lord. But I thought I handled it rather well. Rather well? I had no idea it was you in the lifeboat. We're off to tackle whales, my lord. Tackle? Oh, not fishing again. Next week, Lord Charles meets the dreaded Cymru.